Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we're looking at a router I've been waiting a long time to get my hands on. That is the Synology RT1900AC. This is a very fascinating product, not so much because of its hardware, uh, but because of its interface. It is by far uh, the best interface you're going to see on a router. Now, if you're not familiar with Synology, uh, they usually just make network attached storage devices. They make a lot of them, uh, but that's been kind of their only uh, product line has been making really nice NAS devices, which have great interfaces. And what they've done is ported that interface over to this router. So you're gonna see uh, something you probably have never seen on a router before, which is a, a really robust yet uh, very easy to use interface that isn't just a bunch of static web pages. And we'll get to that in a minute when we get past the hardware portion of the review. Now Synology provided this to the channel as a loaner. Uh, when I'm done with this review, this device gets sent back to Synology. There's no financial relationship with the channel. They're not paying for anything here. Uh, there's also no editorial control being exercised by Synology back to me. So I have full editorial control. All the opinions you're about to hear are mine and mine alone. And I am the only person who's gonna see this video uh, before it gets posted. These are the standard disclaimers I make on this channel moving forward uh, because many other folks on YouTube aren't and I think it's time we all disclose what our relationships are. So that is why I do these lengthy things in case you're wondering. So let's get into the hardware here and see what we've got. So this is a standard three by three wireless router. It supports speeds up to 1.3 gigabits per second, theoretically uh, at five gigahertz. I say theoretically because most of us do not have a laptop that can actually support the wireless three by three speed. So for the most part, we're at two by two speeds, which is slightly slower, but faster than any non-AC router that's out there. I've done a whole video on uh, what all these terms mean in the AC wireless world linked above and down below in the description. So you can check that out to get an idea as to exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, but the bottom line is, is that we're all being sold routers that uh, can't actually fully support the laptops and tablets we have at the moment. But if you get this one now, you'll be kind of future-proofed into the future here. And again, this is about in line with what we've seen on other routers at the same price point. This one retails for about $250, depending on on where you look. It also supports 600 megabits per second on the 2.4 gigahertz band, has a dual core processor. They don't say which one, uh, but it runs at one gigahertz, 256 megabytes of RAM on board as well. Uh, pretty much run of the mill hardware buttons here. You've got your WPS pairing button for uh, quickly pairing it up with printers and other devices that support WPS. You have your Wi-Fi kill switch here. When I took it out of the box, it was actually on the off position. So I had to flick it on to uh, be able to connect to it. So if you get this thing and it doesn't work, flick the switch on, make sure it's on. Otherwise your Wi-Fi won't uh, let you connect. On the front here, you got a bunch of lights. What's nice is you've got a separate light for each of its LAN ports as well as its WAN port and two different lights for each of its wireless bands too. So you can visually see what's going on on your network. And of course a green status light. And there is an eject button on the front of this. And what that button ejects are the things on the side here. So you have an SD card slot here. It supports up to SD XC cards. So you can plug in pretty large cards and have that be a file store on your network. Uh, but you can also plug in a USB 3.0 hard drive or SSD into this slot. Uh, so you can actually use both at the same time for basic file storage. It'll even work as a time machine server for your Macs on your network. So your Macs could back up to your router uh, and be stored on a external hard drive if you want to do something like that. Uh, that USB port will also work with cellular modems to provide internet, internet connectivity to your network. So if your uh, regular internet is down, you can uh, have that port be kind of a backup with a cell modem. Uh, you can also use this as a print server too. So there is some additional functionality beyond just storage on here. If you hit the eject button, it does pop both of these things out at the same time. So you can't choose which one to eject. So the eject button will eject both, uh, but it is nice to have that on the front versus having to log into the interface to get uh, something popped out of it. On the back, you just got your standard uh, gigabit ethernet switch here, just four ports. I like to see more now, especially in routers at the mid range, but uh, four is good enough. It will uh, run at full gigabit speeds. I did a benchmark earlier and it seems to be running just fine. I don't believe it supports link aggregation or anything fancy, but you can get uh, four gigabit ethernet jacks there to work. You also have a gigabit WAN port also for connecting to your ISP and of course power and a power switch. All right, so let's take a look now at the interface. This is clearly the differentiator here with this product. Even though the hardware is very much the same as what you might see elsewhere, uh, the interface is really something to see. So uh, here we are inside of it right now. You can see we can have layered windows here uh, on top of each other. I can even load up additional applications here and have them on screen at the same time. Again, I can move things around. I can resize them similar to what you might see on uh, any modern graphical user interface. I have the file station loaded up here right now because this is 
uh, what I have on the SD card that's currently plugged into the device. So maybe I'll plug in my uh, SSD drive here right now as well, and we'll see what happens when I get that connected. Maybe I'll just hit the refresh button here, and sh uh, soon it should uh, mount that drive and have that accessible to me as well. We'll let that uh, catch up for a second. So there we go. We've got the USB drives appearing now, uh, and I can go in and browse all the files that are on that drive. Uh, so really fascinating stuff here. Now you're going to see on the corner, I'm going to talk about this in a little bit, uh, when you connect a USB 3.0 device, it actually uh, turns it down to 2.0 uh, because it interferes with the 2.4 gigahertz radio. I saw the same issue on an Asus router I looked at earlier in the month. Uh, it's apparently something it, you know, kind of ingrained into this particular hardware class, and uh, you can disable that to get the full speed, but it might reduce your 2.4 gigahertz wireless speed. So we are going to do that in a minute so you can get a feel for it, but uh, just know that's one caveat that if you want the full USB 3 speed, you're going to have to uh, kind of take the hit on your other uh, 2.4 gigahertz radio in the process. Uh, so now within the file system here, I can actually move files around. I can, uh, I can compress them into zip files if I want to do that. So there's a lot of uh, basic file uh, functionality that I've got here on a router, which is really something. Now on the network attached storage products that they make, I could actually go in and edit these files and uh, do all sorts of cool stuff. You can't do that on uh, this one, but you do have uh, some pretty basic file functionality that goes way beyond what we've seen uh, on other routers, which is really impressive. We're going to get to that VPN server in a minute also. So uh, this is the network center. It kind of gives you a, a status screen here when you log in as to what is happening on your network. So I can get a list of all the devices currently connected and how they're connected. So right now I've got my uh, little MacBook Air here on the wired connection. Uh, you can get an idea as to what your CPU load is as well as your memory load as well. So if you're loading in uh, some additional applications, you can make sure that you're staying uh, within its, uh, its memory limits. 256 megabytes is usually pretty good for a router, not always so great for a server. So you just need to keep an eye on things, uh, especially if you start loading up a lot of stuff on here. Uh, but thankfully, they don't give you too many choices of things to load up. And I'll show you some of those things in a minute. Uh, you do have some parental controls here also. So you can actually limit uh, by device uh, who can access your uh, network and when. So if you want to keep your kids off the network at certain hours, you can go in here and, it, and it assigns uh, usage rights by MAC address. Now, if you've got a smart kid, they will, of course, spoof their MAC address and make this useless. But uh, I actually think it might be fun to have your kid try to figure that out. But you can uh, restrict individual devices uh, in that way. There's also some web filtering and some other things as well. Again, very similar to what we've seen on other products, but it's just presented so much nicer here. Uh, you also have a traffic control application here, so you can actually decide who gets beamforming. If you're not familiar with what beamforming is, uh, the newer wireless standards allow the routers to actually uh, kind of point their uh, signal power in the direction of devices that are connecting to boost the range up a little bit. It's a marginal thing, at least in my experience, but it is better than prior generations of wireless devices. But there is a limit to how many uh, things can support beam forming at the same time. So you as the administrator can decide uh, who gets access to that and who doesn't. Uh, you can also outright ban devices. You can change their uh, speeds that they have, or you can set certain devices for high priority. So for example, if I was doing a live stream, I could say my uh, live streaming box has the top priority on the network and it gets all of its packets out ahead of anyone else on the network. And those are all things you can set uh, from within this interface here. And again, all very intuitive and uh, really nice to see. And there's a lot of advanced stuff also that you can get into, which we're not going to get into today, but uh, you have all of those things there. Uh, there's some basic security features and uh, things that I have seen on other uh, routers as well. So you do have a lot of anti-malware uh, things that you can employ on there as well. You can also get a notification sent to you uh, via email, SMS, and even on uh, push notification services as well. So you do have the ability to kind of set different uh, notifications, a lot of them surrounding network events and other things like malware being detected on your network and whatnot too. So it does some background monitoring, which might be useful in small business environments or even in your home. If your kid downloads something and starts transmitting something crazily, it can actually push a notification to your phone uh, so you can know you can go out and deal with it uh, quickly and have an idea as to what's going on out there. Uh, there's also some really easy uh, setup modes here as well. So you can uh, set it up in a couple different ways. And again, these are things that are all on other routers, but I think they've really done a nice job of explaining exactly what you're trying to set up. So I can uh, change it into access point mode, for example, and just have it not act as a router, or I can have it act as a client on my network 
uh, and it's all very intuitive to get all those things up and running. Now what I'm gonna do here is go into the uh, application menu here so you can actually drag your stuff out to the desktop for quicker access or you can access it within here. Uh, they have a package center which is similar to what you might see on their network attached storage devices and these are this is basically their app store and there isn't much available at the moment uh, for the router but I'm sure as time goes on they'll probably add applications to it. Uh, right now there's just a few that are available so you have your download station which is basically a BitTorrent client uh, it supports some other protocols as well. Uh, you have your media server so you can serve things off your attached storage via DLNA to devices around your home. Uh, the VPN server we'll take a look at in a second. You can install your own DNS server on it and there's also a radius server for, um, for uh, outbound authentication, remote authentication too. So you've got a couple of nice things there too. What's really neat too is that you can actually set up two-factor authentication just on this interface. So if you want to have something where you have to check your phone for a number in addition to the password, uh, you can add a second factor to uh, your authentication when you pop in there. The VPN server is actually identical to the one that's on their network attached storage devices. Uh, the one I recommend using is OpenVPN, so you can set that up on the router level. Uh, so you could actually set two of these things up at two different locations and uh, connect networks together securely through OpenVPN by connecting two of these devices together remotely. Uh, and it's nice to have that built into this router. Uh, many other routers out there do have this, but again, implemented in a very nice interface uh, that's really easy to uh, get configured and operating too. So you do have a lot of neat stuff on there. So that is kind of the things that stood out to me on the interface. Uh, what we're gonna do now though is take a look a little bit further into its uh, storage features because again, this does have a lot of stuff that uh, falls into line with what we've seen on uh, some of their network attached storage devices. And we're gonna dig a little bit into what it can do and what it can't do. All right, so I have two devices connected to this right now. We have my portable SSD here, which is formatted with the NTFS file system. And of course, we have the little 8 gig SD card in there that is formatted with, I think, FAT32. So I'm gonna go over to the uh, storage and printer application that we loaded up just a second ago. And you'll see that it has detected both of those devices uh, connected to the router. So we have that SD card as well as the USB hard disk. And uh, you can set privileges by partition. So uh, on here I could decide, all right, the SD card, uh, admin can have read and write access to it. Uh, guests may be able, be able to just to read only on that particular card. Uh, and you can also create users and give them different access rights, but that is going to be by partition. So on the NAS devices, on the network attached storage devices, you can set that uh, by folder, but this one is only at the top level partition level. But again, you can have multiple users uh, with different levels of access that uh, consists of no access, read, write, or uh, read only. Uh, you also have a few file services here too, so you can determine uh, what kinds of protocols the file sharing will support. Uh, so I have both the Windows file service enabled as well as the Mac file service. I could also assign a time machine drive on one of my connected devices for backups as well. And if I'll go over to my uh, finder here and zoom out for a second, you'll see that on my network here on my Mac, it shows up as a, another computer on my network, just like a network attached storage device would. And I can go in here and uh, select my SD card, for example, and uh, even browse that text file we were looking at earlier. So it works again, just like you would see uh, on a network attached storage device. And because I have access to that uh, directory or that partition, I can see those things on there. You also have the ability to turn on an FTP service. It supports FTP as well as a secure FTP. So you have some options on that. Uh, you can also set up media indexing. So if this is enabled, uh, that will go through all of your drives and find anything that it can share over its DLNA server. And if you turn on your television that supports DLNA, which is a very standard uh, multimedia sharing protocol that we've talked a lot about on the channel. Uh, you can watch movies off of this thing too if you wanted to. No transcoding, no Plex server, anything like that, but you can do basic uh, file sharing via your TV if you want to do something like that. Uh, there are some uh, settings here to create thumbnails and everything else. This will, by the way, slow down your router because it requires the processor and memory to go through all those files and make thumbnails and everything. So I would probably avoid uh, enabling that thumbnailing service because I really would I'd not recommend using your router also as your media server uh, in the house. Uh, the hibernation thing, a lot of people always ask when you have a USB hard drive attached, does it go to sleep after a certain length of time? And the answer is yes. You can set that up here. By default, it doesn't. Uh, but you can give it a time limit to say maybe after 30 minutes of no activity, uh, go ahead and hibernate that drive and spin it down so it's not always on. So you have that option there. And then of course you can go in uh, and set up your printer uh, options here too. And it supports 
Google Cloud Print too. So this can act uh, as an intermediary for uh, Google Cloud Printing, which is something that if you had a printer that doesn't support it, uh, this will and will kind of act as an intermediary to make sure that things you print from your Chrome OS device, for example, uh, will go through your router and then uh, spit out on your printer. I might do a separate video on this because this looks actually rather interesting. I've been covering a lot of Chrome OS devices and I think I may want to try that later. So how fast can it share files on the network? We're going to find out. We've got my USB 3.0 SSD connected here. I'm going to disable that uh, little feature to prevent it from interfering with a 2.4 gigahertz wireless and run it at full 3.0 speeds. And uh, this drive can easily exceed the bandwidth of gigabit ethernet. So let's see if we can saturate this connection uh, with the Blackmagic speed test. All right, on our Blackmagic disk speed test connected via ethernet, uh, we're not seeing the kind of speeds we would usually see on a uh, Synology network attached storage device. We're only getting uh, write speeds around 34 or 30 megabytes per second and about 40 megabytes per second on the reads. Typically, if you're maxing out a gigabit ethernet connection, you're looking at speeds over 100 megabytes per second over the network. So uh, clearly they're not going to cannibalize their other business here. Uh, this also means that your time machine backups will be rather slow going to this because of the fact that you're not uh, transferring data at the best possible speeds. But again, we're dealing with a router here that's primary function is not serving files, but uh, giving you the internet. And uh, it's actually pretty darn good considering it can do both of those things here at the same time. So uh, I am not going to ding them too hard on that, but uh, this does give you an idea of the maximum file transfer speeds you can expect expect from this. But let's see now uh, how fast its wireless speeds are. I've got to reconfigure a couple of things on the desk here and we're going to measure how fast this AC wireless connection can be under ideal circumstances. Okay, so for our test here, we're going to have our little MacBook here connect wirelessly to the Synology router. The Synology router is connected via an ethernet cable to the other Mac over here. So we're going to be pushing data wirelessly under ideal circumstances because they're right next to each other uh, into the router and then back out to the Mac. We'll measure that speed. And I do this so we can see what the maximum wireless throughput is on the router. So let's go ahead and uh, zoom in the camera a little bit here. We're going to uh, start that test and we'll see what we get. Now most routers we see uh, actually come in around this speed, which is good. It's actually in line with other things at its price points. So we're seeing uh, pretty much around the 600 megabits per second uh, speed going back and forth to that other Mac and that is exactly the kind of speed that we want to see. So uh, this really is in line uh, with other routers at its price point. So that is a Synology RT1900AC and from a hardware and performance standpoint, it's pretty much in line with what we've seen on other $250 routers. The range is about the same, the performance is about the same, but what's really different here is the interface. It is really unique, very, very different, and they very successfully ported over their network attached storage interface uh, to a router and it really does work. I liken it to uh, what I saw with the Google OnHub router, which was designed as a very simple consumer device. It was really nice to work with its interface, but it lacked depth. This has plenty of depth. Uh, yet maintains some intuitiveness and actually some simplicity that uh, even new users to routers might actually find to be uh, pretty usable in the sense that it's not very difficult to get it up and running. So uh, they've done a tremendous job here in bringing that interface over. And that's what really, again, separates this from uh, just about anything else on the market at the moment. So very nice interface, very easy to work with. And I think that's really something that separates it out quite well uh, from the many, many, many routers that we've looked at here on this channel and the many more that we haven't that are out in the marketplace. Synology has also done a very good job of keeping their products up to date. I know my network attached storage device from Synology gets updated constantly and every almost, almost once a week sometimes. It's really uh, very, they're very good about keeping up on uh, all the latest security updates and everything else. This thing's already had three updates uh, in the short time that it's been released. So I think they're, if they uh, really treat this like they do their network attached storage devices, they should have a very good schedule of uh, system and security updates, which is very important on a router, especially because this thing is connected directly to the internet and accessible to the world, at least on uh, one end of it. So it's good to have uh, things constantly being updated for your protection. So we'll uh, keep an eye on this thing as it develops. I would like to see kind of the uh, Uber version that maybe has more ethernet ports and a little bit more memory and processing power. So we'll see if maybe this becomes a successful product for them. They might continue making more in the future. If you've got questions, do leave them down below. I plan to keep it uh, here in the studio for at least the next couple of days uh, before I pack it up and send it back uh, later this week or early next. So definitely leave some questions down below. We might do a couple of follow-ups if uh, there's something huge that I missed that is worthy of additional coverage. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the generosity of my Patreon supporters. If you find the channel helpful, you too can contribute for as little as a dollar a month. 
Visit lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.